Ladies and gentlemen, we take you now by transcription behind the scenes of a police headquarters in a great American city where under the cold, glaring lights will pass before us the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. This is the lineup. through that screen. I hope not. You've got the man? Well, we picked up some possible suspects in the neighborhood. Oh, they'll all be in the lineup? That's right. <coughs> Are you sure we're not too close? No, no, they can't see us. May I have your attention, please? You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? <coughs> Thank you. My name is Cogger, Sergeant Pete Cogger. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, their name and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. At the end of each line, when I ask for questions or identifications, call out the number. If you're sure or not too sure of the suspect, have him held. The officers who took your name will assist you. They're seated among you. Please be prompt with your questions or identifications. When the prisoners leave here, they're sent to the washroom and dressed back into their jail clothes. It makes it quite difficult to bring them back after they leave here. The questions I ask these suspects are merely to get a natural tone of voice, so do not pay too much attention to their answers, as they often lie. All right, bring on the line. All right, keep it moving. All the way to the end of the stage. Move it up. Right over here. That's right. All of you turn and face front. Keep your hands at your sides. Look straight ahead through the screen. When I ask you questions, don't mumble. Talk up. All right, number one, Fred Alton, car theft. Take off your hat, Fred. That's right. How long have you been in town, Fred? I don't know, about six months. Talk up, Fred. The people in back want to hear you, too. How long you been in town? Uh, <coughs> six months. That's better. Where do you live? Uh, Templeton Street. What number? Well, I guess it's, um, uh, 222. You guess? Uh, it's 222. One, 221. Where'd you get the car, Fred? What car? The one you were driving when the officers arrested you. Well, I, I wasn't driving no car. It's not what the report says. Well, I wasn't driving no car. Look at the people out there, Fred. Not to the floor. You ever drive a Pontiac? Oh, I've drove lots of cars. What about a 51 Pontiac? Oh, I guess maybe. What model? Oh, it's a sedan, coupe. Club coupe? I guess maybe. What was the color, Fred? Oh, it was some kind of, some kind of blue. It was sky blue. Where'd you get it, Fred? Get what? The sky blue 1951 Pontiac Club coupe you were driving when the officers arrested you. I wasn't driving no car. That's not him, Mr. Right. I'm positive Step that's back, not Fred. him. Okay, Mr. James. Number two, Jack Carlson, narcotics. That's right, Jack. Step right out there and face front. Where do you live, Jack? Ah, uh, you know, Sergeant. I do, but the people out there don't. Tell them. 16th and Grand. That's 825 North 16th. Why'd they pick you up, Jack? Gosh, I don't know. This says narcotics. It does? Heroin. And you don't know why they picked you up? Gosh, no, I don't know. Ah, uh, slide on down, Jack. Hmm. Okay, number three, Samuel Brackett, armed robbery. Where do you live, Sam? Casper Hall Crow. Keep your hands at your sides and talk up, Sam. The people in back want to hear, too. Now, where do you live? Casper Hall I said talk up, Sam. What's the address? Larchmont Street, 2100 block somewhere. I don't know the number. How long you lived there? A couple of days. Where'd you come from? Illinois. What's the matter with your hands, Sam? Nothing. Then keep them at your side. What town in Illinois? Joliet. Statesville? Yeah. What'd you fall for? B and A. Breaking and entering. Anyone arrested with you? Yeah. Who? Joe. Joe who? I don't know his last name. Well, I do. Joe Pusera. He'll be number 14 in the next line. How long you known him, Sam? A couple days. You have any weapons? Joe had a gun. What kind of a gun was it? 38, Smith & Wesson. Blue steel or nickel plate? Nickel. And the gun was Joe's? That's what I said. And I'll say, this is a stick-up. This is a stick-up. Louder. This is a stick-up. Again, louder. This is a stick-up. Mrs. James. No, no, not him either, Lieutenant.
come in, Pete. Well, any luck, then? Oh, how can you have luck? A girl gets herself beaten to death in Ludlow Park in the middle of the night. No identification, no murder weapon, no witnesses. Yeah. Hey, coffee smells good. Yeah, help yourself. No, I guess not. It's too hot. What about that Mrs. James? Oh, just a long shot. She thought she saw a man drive a 40 or 41 green Ford coupe away from the park about the time of the murder. Mm -hmm. Did she get a good look at him? Oh, it's too dark. What about the Ford? There's a pickup out on it. Must be 5,000 cars like it in town. Mm -hmm. Missing person? Nothing. You'd think somebody'd call in. A young girl like that, all that stuff in the papers. It's been 48 hours now. Yeah. I'm thirsty. Let's get a Coke. Oh, sure. Sure. She was a good-looking kid, Pete, before somebody got to her. You figure the guy was a psycho? He was beat up pretty bad. What about robbery? Well, there wasn't any purse found. Yeah. You want one? Yeah, thanks. Thanks, too, I owe you. All right. Well, that kind of deal drives you nuts. Newspapers splash headlines, public yells for results. We've got a Jane Doe in the morgue, no motive. A psycho to look for in a city of three million. Yeah, it hits the spot, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Better than coffee on a hot night like this. Mm -hmm. How's it taste, Ben? Yeah, good, Quine. Try one. Yeah, I think I will. I was just coming to your office. And nothing doing. Not this close to payday. Oh, well, this time you're lucky. I already tapped Fuller. He plays lousy Pinocchio. <laughs> he does, for a fact. Uh, no, no, Ben. It's about that Ludlow Park chain, though. Car 62 just found a green 41 Ford Coupe abandoned up on Summit Road near the reservoir. Blood all over the front seat. Any time getting here? Smart boy. Must be 20 degrees cooler here than at the crime lab. Mm. Uh, hi, Lieutenant. Yeah, how's it look, Fuller? Well, it could be the jalopy you're after, Lieutenant. There's dried blood on that front seat, all right. Take a look. All right, let's have a flash. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no mistake about that. Uh-uh. Well, I can't even be sure it's human, Ben, until I test back at the lab. Yeah, oh, there's a gambler for you. What are the odds in how you test out for? <laughs> it's very funny. <laughs> what about prints? Yeah, we've dusted. Nothing. Yeah, no registration slip, Ben. There's no plates either. Anybody call in on the motor and serial numbers? Crockett's checking that. No, uh, I'll see how he's making out. There. The car's clean the rest of the way, too. The glove compartment, the rear deck, under and behind the seats. Mm, regular spring house cleaning, yeah. yeah. Only somebody got messy about that front seat. Yeah. Think it's the buggy you're looking for? No, yeah, it could be. Could have killed her in the car, tossed the body out in the park, and driven up here. Yeah. The car's been here a couple of days. Guessing? Well, look at the weeds and the tire tracks. Oh, they tell you, huh? <laughs> more gardening and less pinochle, and they tell you, too. <laughs> I make more money at pinochle. Well, that's not what Quine says. Yeah, lucky stiff. He must have been carrying a horseshoe around. <laughs> oh, we uh, get a registration in the car, Ben. Oh, what is it? Mary Chambers, 811 Agar Street. Want to run over? It's too early to go to bed. Private apartment? Yeah. Duplex. Is her name on the bell there? Not this side. Now, hey, here she is. Mary Chambers, Sandra Owen. I wonder if they're both still alive. Oh, it's still plenty hot. Yeah. Now, ring again. Sure. Uh, somebody's coming now. Hmm. Yeah, what are you... Oh, man. Are you Mary Chambers? Mary, you want to see her? Yes. Is she in? No, I'm Sandra, her roommate. Maybe I can help her. Huh? Oh, maybe you can, Miss Owen. Uh, we're police officers. Cops? Uh, that's right. Can we come in, please? Well, what do you want? We'd just like to ask you a few questions. Well, sure. Thanks. 
You'll have to excuse how I look. I was washing my hair. Uh, sit down. Oh, that's all right, Miss Lynn. What's the matter? Is Mary in trouble? Oh, we're not sure. Uh, tell me, uh, does she own a 41 Ford Coupe Green? Yeah, that's right. I think it's a 41. She didn't run over anybody or something, did she? Nothing like that. I didn't figure she would. Mary's a good driver. Say, my hair is pretty wet. You mind if I dry it while we're talking? Well, no, no. Go right ahead. I hate to walk around with wet hair. It makes me look a fright. What about Mary? When did you see her last, Miss Owen? Well, let's see. Must be not before last. She's been missing since then? Missing? What makes you think she's missing? You said you hadn't seen her for two nights. I'm sure. I was out of town on location for Capricorn Productions. I was in pictures, you know. I thought maybe you were. Sure, most people can tell just by looking at me. Yeah. So you haven't seen Mary since she came back? Or seen the city papers? No. But why all the questions? If the kid's in trouble, tell me. Is that uh, her picture on the radio? Yeah, that's her. What do you think, then? Kind of glamorous. Hard to tell. Oh, for Pete's sake, officer, spell it, will you? What's going on? What's with Mary? Well, I'm sorry, Miss Owen, but I'm afraid Mary Chambers might be dead. Dead? Murdered. You're kidding. Aren't you kidding? Would you mind coming down to the morgue with us? Make a possible identification? Oh, sure. Sure, I'll go. I'll wait here a second. I'll get some clothes on. No hurry. That's right. This is the first time I've ever been in a place like this. I kind of hate you. I'm sorry. It's the only way to make sure. Oh, hi, Lieutenant. Which one tonight? Jane Doe, number one, George. The Ludlow Park girl, huh? Right here. It might be kind of rough on the lady, Lieutenant. You saw her? Yeah. I pull it back. Sure. Can you see him, Miss Owen? Not too well. Better step closer. Miss Owen? That's her, Lieutenant. Jack Benny's back in town. And that means, of course, the whole delightful Jack Benny gang's back on CBS Radio Sunday nights. Listen in this coming Sunday for the laughs of your life with Mary, Dennis, Bob Crosby, Rochester, and the rest of the Jack Benny show. Back in action again where? We're right here on CBS Radio, of course. Lieutenant, nobody'd want to want to do that to Mary. Why should they? Well, we we're hoping you could tell us, Miss Owen. It just don't make sense. She's only been in town a couple of weeks. Coffee, Miss Owen? Oh, gee, thanks, Sergeant. Cream, sugar? Plain. Sure. She'd only been here a couple of weeks, huh? Yeah, she hadn't hardly met anybody around. Only at Roski's. Uh, what's Roski's? He owns the Belmont Grill. His real name's Anton Kararowski or something. Everybody calls him Roski, though. Mary worked there. The waitress? Only temporary. She was going to get in pictures, too. This coffee's good. Uh, what's the address? 1812 Larchmont. Big neon signs out in front. You can't miss the place. Mm -hmm. you don't eat there, though. The food's lousy. Uh, was she friendly with anyone there? Um, Roski, maybe? Oh, the big slob. He's got ideas about cute blondes, all right. Only his wife watches too close. What about boyfriends? She didn't have anybody. Not anybody steady, that is. Well, she'd go to a movie or something like that once in a while, but not with anybody steady. Mm. Nobody else you can think of? Honest, there wasn't nobody, Lieutenant. It couldn't be. Not a sweet kid like Mary. Nobody could want to kill her. Somebody did. <laughs> Ah, 
why you guys always pick a lousy time to ask questions? Your place isn't busy, Rusky. Who's talking busy? My wife's around. She gets ideas. Well, she got any about you and Mary Chambers? Like she's got with every waitress. Nothing more? Look, I'll tell you like that. In this business, you got to have waitresses, good lookers, sexy, you understand? Only with my wife, it don't pay. Everything I got to do with women is poison. What does she want? I should run a men's room concession? And let's get back to Mary Chambers. What's to get back to? All I know is like that. She worked here a couple weeks. Up no more than that's all. That's a pretty good reason. I guess she beat up brutal like paper set. Worse. Oh, what kind of beat her to death brutal like that? Uh, what about your customers, Roski? Notice anybody making a particular play for her? Look, I'll explain you like that. With pretty girls like I got, usual the customers, they try. What they got to lose? Only with Mary, wasn't nobody getting even fourth base. You sure? My wife could tell you. Oh, uh, uh, please, don't ask her. The ideas that woman gets, even the redhead she was suspecting. Oh, redhead, another waitress? Who said waitress? A tall, thin, redhead guy eats in here two, three, couple times a week. Always, you know, the dollar miss ten special he gets. Never says nothing, only he eats and he gets out. So what makes her think he's crazy in the head? That's what she thought? I told you she gets ideas. Says he was always watching Mary, like he was hungry or something. I did. Sure he was hungry. Why else he would be here? Uh, was he here the last night Mary worked for you? Mister, what do I do? Do I keep a time clock on customers? He's been in the last week a couple times. Maybe that night, maybe not. Does he live around here? Who is interested where he lives? As long as he eats here. But I don't think you're looking for him. All he ever said to Mary was, give more butter. Maybe you'll say a little more to us. Uh, you want uh, maybe to plant some cops in here to see if that guy shows up again? Okay with you? What should I do? Say no? Only they better be plenty hungry. If they don't eat nothing, my wife will throw them out. Oh, come in, Pete. Hey, you're a little late. I had to stop at the drugstore. Oh, stomach again? Yeah. Lucky you didn't have any of Roski's apple pie. I had the huckleberry yesterday. Oh. Five days of that food. And they say a cop's feet take a beating. <laughs> Who's down there now? Uh, Quine and Burton. We'll keep the steak out another 24 hours. Then we have to figure he won't show up there again. And if he ever ate that apple pie, he won't. Yeah. Well, nothing doing here either. Yeah, what's this? Registered SDs. Got him from Doc Gerson's office. Oh, what's he say? Killer figures to be a psycho, all right. Probably a deviant. I mean, there's not a tall, thin, red-headed man in the bunch. He's not in the neighborhood, either. We checked seven blocks in all directions from the restaurant. How can there be a hunk of territory that big without a red-headed man living here? Uh, beats me. Well, maybe he dyed his hair. All I know is that we have to get this guy before... Guthrie. Quiet down. Your man just came out. Why now, Ben? Waiting outside. Yeah. Keep going, Ben. He's already left. Burton telling him? Yeah. Turn right at the next corner. What happened, Quine? They must have seen Rasky give us the high sign. Walked right out again. Burton called just before you pulled up. The guys hold in at 2112 Baker. 2100 block? It's 800 numbers from here. Uh, if we checked one lousy block more, we'd have had him five days ago. Burton called from. Find lady's apartment. He must still be in there. Yeah, cover the back door, Fine. We'll go in. In back, Fine. Right. There, Ben, down the hallway. Yeah, it's Burton. Where is he, Burton? Back way. Kitchen. Got a belly gun. Quine and I'll take him. He's psycho, Ben. He was waiting outside. I oh, called Quine. Said he, he wanted to cop her. Mary Chambers? Yeah, he did it. Hit out in the floor till she, till she got through work. Then made a drive to the park and, and killed her. Said it all nice and easy. Said he was ready to let me take him in. Then he gunned me. A real psycho. Hey, 
ducked in here somewhere, Ben. Yeah, we'll find him. Sure knew the neighborhood all right. Never saw so many backyards and alleys in my life. Couldn't get a clean shot anywhere. Yeah, it's going to be tough to hear all these kids around. He must have figured that. Yeah, we should spot him. Tall, redhead like that. Hey, look at that ride. Rocket ships. Sure keep the kids up to date. They're really going for it, too. Yeah, I wouldn't mind having a piece of that. Hey, there he is. Where, Ben? Ferris wheel. Yeah, you see him? Yeah, he's running the thing. He must work here. Uh-huh. Guns down, a cop knows we're tailing him, and he comes to work. How do you figure that? Well, what I'm trying to figure out is how to take him before he starts gunning down a few kids. Well, we can't clear the place. No. Might be all he need to start triggering. Well, we can't take the chance. Well, his landlady would. Said he was a nice, sweet young man. Always paid his rent on time. He thinks we're making a mistake. His name's Emmett Foley. We can't rush him. No, no. Where he's standing, operating that hand lever, there's fences on both sides. You have to come straight at him. Uh, no place to get a clean shot at him either. One wild slugger hit a half a dozen people. And hey, what's that thing in back of him? Part of the tunnel for the kid's train that runs around? Uh, yeah, it's a streamliner with real smoke. No opening directly in back of him, though. We'd have to break from the closest end of the tunnel, 15, 20 feet in the open. Uh, He'd spot us, sure. And maybe not if he was busy out in front. I'll give you and Quine four minutes to get back there. Then I'll start talking to him. What about Captain Waldo? That's too risky waiting. You can't figure a mind like that. No telling when he's liable to open up with that gun. Oh, okay. I always did want to ride on one of those trains. Ticket goes back over that way, mister. Uh, how much for a ride on that thing? Two bits and worth it, too. It's the best ride in the park. Yeah, it looks like it, all right. Say, uh, is it safe? You ought to know better than ask that. We got mostly kids riding in this park. Nobody takes chances on hurting kids. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's right. What's that levy off right there? Is that a brake or something? Don't come any closer, mister. I got a gun. Well, what are you doing with that? You're, you're, you're a cop. I can tell. I can always tell a cop. You shouldn't have come here, mister. Now I gotta kill you, too. Like you kill Mary Chambers? You shouldn't have been that way. Not looking at me, not, not caring about me. I loved her, and she wouldn't even look at me. Is that why, Emmett? You thought she didn't like you? Did you ask her about it when you were out in the park? She laughed. And I loved her, and she laughed. And the tire iron was right there, and there wasn't anything else I could do. She shouldn't have laughed at me. You're right, Foley. That wasn't nice of her. It wasn't a bit nice of her to laugh at Stand you. Stand still! She's trying to get close to me, aren't you? Trying to take my gun away so you can put me in jail. Well, why should I want to do that, Emma? You've got a right to kill her. She laughed at you. No, she shouldn't have done that. Laugh at me. That girl in Chicago, she laughed at me, too. Well, she deserved to die, too, didn't she, Emma? Now, I don't blame you for killing her, too. She deserved... Stand still, do you hear? I'm going to kill you, too. But I don't want to do it yet. Lots of kids still want to ride on here. Lots of kids. I got to see if they're happy. That's my job, making kids happy. Well, that's a fine job, Emma. Couldn't ask for a better one. I, I, I was gonna, I was gonna let that other cop take me in. He seemed like a nice guy. And then I remembered the kids. And I, I got to make the kids happy. That's my job. Well, sure it is. That's why I want to help you. That's why I'm here, Emmett, to help you. No, no, you're not. No, you're, you, you're lying to me. I know. Well, why should I lie to you, Emmett? I only want to help you. No, you don't. You're lying. I know. That's why you sent those two friends of yours around on that train. I, I saw you. I haven't got any friends, Emmett. Only you. I'd like to be friends with you. Oh. Would you? I mean, would you really? Well, sure I would. I like you. You do? I like you very much, Emmett. No, you don't. No, you're lying, too. I, I'm going to shoot you. Only after the park closes. I still got to make some kids happy before the park closes. Okay, okay, Emmett. I'll wait. I want to help you make them happy. Then, then, then tell your friends not to sneak up on me from in back. I see him back there near the tunnel. Tell him you hear us, or I'll, I'll shoot you right now. I told you I haven't got any friends, Emmett. The only friends I got is... Tell him! Hey! You two, go back. We don't want you here. Emmett and I are friends. We don't want you. 
Emmett and I don't want anybody else around. Go back now or we'll shoot you. We'll shoot you. There you are, Emmett. You believe me now? I said I'd shoot them if they bothered us. Would you? I mean, would, would you would you really shoot them if they bothered us? Why, sure I would, Emmett. We got to make those kids happy, don't we? Sure I'd shoot them. Oh, it's, it's nice to find a friend. I don't have any. People don't like me. Girls especially. It's nice to find a friend. Well, I've been lonely too, Emmett. That's why I'm glad I met you. We, we can work together here, helping kids to be happy. How about that, Emmett? We'll work together. Yeah, that'd be nice. Real nice. Having a, having a friend to help you. Sure. And you can teach me how to run the Ferris wheel. Would you do that, Emmett? Teach me how to run the Ferris wheel? Emmett? Yeah, sure, sure, I would. Oh, I, I wouldn't teach anybody, but I, I, I teach a friend. I was hoping you'd say that, Emmett. And we can start right now. You show me how to operate that lever and we'll... Stand still. No, you're lying again. You're lying. You're no friend. How can you say that, Emmett? You know you, I'm your... You yelled at those other cops. You yelled about shooting, and you scared all the kids away. See, you look look at them. Kids are all gone away. You scared them. Oh, no, I didn't, Emmett. It, it, it's late. You, the park's going to close, and they're getting ready to go home. You don't like the kids. You don't, you don't like me. You spoiled everything. Now i got to shoot you for that. i got to shoot you, and this isn't even closing time. Oh, you're making a mistake, Emmett. I'm your friend. No, you, you scared the kids. You don't like me either. Now i got to kill you before closing, and i got to kill you right now. Hey. Hey. Ben? Okay, Pete. Oh, that crowd sure took its time clearing away. Didn't think I'd ever get a clean beat on it. Yeah. Uh, Pete, find somebody who knows how to stop this fool wheel, will you? been going around in front of my eyes so long I'm getting dizzy. Starring Bill Johnstone as Lieutenant Ben Guthrie with Jack Moyles as Sergeant Pete Carger. Was written by Sidney Marshall with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were Virginia Gregg, Howard McNear, Benny Rubin, Joseph Kearns, High Everback, and Peter Leeds. The lineup was transcribed in Hollywood by Jaime Del Valle. Tonight is Music Night on CBS Radio. Enjoy the orchestras of Alfredo Antonini and Ray Block. Songs by Earl Wrightson, Jimmy Carroll, Eugenie Baird, and Francis Greer. Hear Georgie Price and his big timers. Music and songs from America's new and old musical comedy from Vaudeville's Greatest Day. It's Friday night on most of these same CBS radio stations. Dan Cover is speaking. And remember, the week's top fight is broadcast Wednesday night on the CBS Radio Network.